Hello and welcome to Flashback Generations. Hello. Uh, we've just finished the Gondor War campaign for Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. That's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. um, it's Lord of the Rings themed and uh, we're going to talk about three things here. Uh, the game itself, Gondor War, the campaign book and the, the tournament scene. Yeah. So uh, let's just jump in. We're intent to make this a short, uh, comprehensive video with you know our feelings of the game and uh, like what we think it did. Ramble. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll start off with the game itself. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good game. Uh, um, we got diff we come from different backgrounds on this because I've been playing Age of Sigmar for a few years and Sai si hasn't ever played it at all. So I'm always comparing it to that and also we're also comparing it to old Warhammer over probably a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, well, I have a background in this because I actually played the first edition of it right. in 2002, I think it was. Um, so I read the rules then, and surprisingly, when I actually picked up this rule book, I went, "Whoa, it's the same game." It's pretty much it's the actually same. Played the same thing. That, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's in a really good way. They've cleaned it up. It's actually a pretty good read. Like the, the rule book is really easy to just to yeah. get on with. Yeah, there's a lot of it. If you used yeah. to Age of Sigma, where the rule book is about twenty pages nowadays. This is hundreds of pages, isn't it? A couple of hundred pages. Yeah, yeah. And it's um, like, what do I do when I trip over a wall and fall into a rowing boat with a chicken leg in my hand? There'll be a page of rules for it, you know. So there's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit old school feeling in that way, in terms of it's got very fine, uh, granular rules, hasn't it, about this and that. And the shooting's much more complicated. They've actually, well, they've done a good it's not job. A bad thing. Um, one, you know, you do a test for everything. One is terrible. You've fallen over on your face. Yeah. You've done the worst thing. You take a hit. Uh, three, uh, two to five, you like, successfully done the action. And six, six, you do it six, really well. Heroically, yeah. you've done the action so well. And that's so, jumping, leaping, falling off a horse. Yeah. Pretty much everything. So once you get your head around that, yeah. that's easy enough. That's it. That's it. And actually, I think I think the game actually works. And uh, a credit to it, a lot of the book is that. It's a really good game overall, really good war game, yeah. Um, can get a bit tedious when you're figuring out all the pairing off of all the fights in larger games. Yeah. Can be, yeah. but you know, if somebody brought a nine model army, you know, that's not going to be a problem. But if two, if you've got two cobbling wars against each other, that's going to get, you know, might get a bit tedious. Yeah, in yeah. The, um, the combat system is very easy. It's, you know, you roll off to see who wins. Yeah. Uh, it's called the duel. Yeah. Um, you've got your, how many attacks you have, how many dice you have, you've got a fight. Nasty side. shot. Nasty shot. For very, me. very simple. Yeah, nasty shot for me was the strength versus defense table, which is the strength versus toughness table from Warhammer, <laughs> nearly, but it's not quite as symmetrical, so that's a bit, right, let's stop and work out why I need to wound you, you know, which in AOS it's just, yeah. I need a three, I need a five, whatever, you know, so yeah. it's, it's, it's more granular, there's a bit more granularity to it than. Uh, uh, modern, more modern war game. If I was to talk about niggles in this, uh, there's two things. I'm not that much of a fan of the true line of sight with the shooting. I think it can get quite awkward here and there. Has anybody got that right? Yeah, no, 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 one's, no one's got it right. But um, and then I think the movement in this is quite sloppy with the bases. Like it, it kind of requires it to be precise. But you know, when we're playing Legion, for instance, I actually feel like. Or Armada. There's, there's, there's a lot more. That, aren't they? Well, no, Armada, they figure themselves out. Yeah. Legion, it's just, I've only got one guy to worry about, and everybody else can just follow. This game sort of. This is like, oh, he's going there, he's going there, he's going there, he's going there. You know, uh, so. But everyone's got like a, a border radius of one inch, and when it when counts, when it doesn't Draw count. Zones, it, just, yeah. it just, it can look messy, and you know, but at the same time, the game works. In a, in a, a good flowing game, the game works very well. I suspect there's a, there's a, a maximum, there's an optimal number of models per side for this game, which is probably a bit less than an 800 point army and a bit more than a 200 point army. I don't know where that is yet, but you know, sort of about an hour and a half game is where it's going to be the sweet spot for, yeah, for this. Yeah, uh, I can see that. Uh, I think. Well, we'll jump then into tournament play. Yeah. Uh, so tournament play, uh, we've only been, been to one event. Uh, it was a big 72 player event. I can't really talk it because I took some out, just for laughs, <laughs> and lost five, four, four out of five games or something like that. Because Smaug doesn't do scenarios. No, he doesn't do scenarios. Yeah. But uh, I actually, I brought a Gondor, a uh, Rohan Rohan Force. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It was two days. It was, uh, I came 20th out of 72, which I was very happy with yeah, in the, in, as an end result. Um, it worked very well as a tournament game. There was yeah. a friendly crowd there. And it was uh, really friendly. What I thought was 
in particular good was the choices in the books, like what you could do, like the armies you could build and what was actually there, like the possibilities were so good. Uh, this game really, really lends itself, like a maximum positivity there given yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the alliance matrix and oh, it's, yeah. like the way it works and the um, it's good in tournament mode isn't it it looks lovely too like yeah. when you're in the in the tournament and you keep on going to different tables of like their terrain it's a really really nice setup the what was it we shouldn't mention the tournament i suppose side because it was uh what was it called uh, desolation of stockport yeah. yeah and yeah the, the the guy who runs it is it steve crow yes it's steve yeah. crow the terrain he, he comes up with is amazing, the best I've ever seen. Oh, it's beautiful, yeah. The full light, you Top know, marks. the party tree area, all sorts of good stuff, it's amazing. I'll tell you what, the yeah. best for that. I'm like, I, I, you know, I, I'll sign up for more events. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, and lastly, let's talk about uh, the Gondor War campaign. This is the this book. book. Yeah. This book. Uh, and there's a series of these coming out now, there's been you know, Shire, the Trouble in the Shire, uh, Rumble in Rohan, yeah. War in Gondor, what's next probably, you know, oh, I don't know. Something Shakedown in Isengard, you know. Something down somewhere else. But we've read three of these and we played through this in its entirety. We've, we've played the whole thing, as you can see, uh, you know, got a flashback generations, you can see in campaigns, Gondor at War, you can see a written report of every single mission. And overall, I would say 40% of the missions were good. Yeah. Um, maybe 90% of them were okay or quite fun or yeah. you know whatever and 10% of them were no, pretty it's terrible. Yeah. Like, so, but you know what, I actually thought that that was a bad percentage rate. To, like when, you, when you're when you spending what, 30 pounds on a book, you want, That's why you, need it. you want a really good campaign. I want, a lot, a lot of this felt like it wasn't um, play tested at all. Like this, card games and yeah there's many mini games a very small number of the scenarios are based on mini cards and dice games and one they range from bizarre and awful to mildly amusing um but the those mini games are the one where there's one way you're running around legolas is running around on supposed to be running around on top of an elephant you know, oh. and that just didn't work at all it, was it just awful. felt like nobody tried it out it was a good idea on paper maybe but it just didn't but work but you buy you buy this because you want to actually play the game. I I mean, for me to fix to fix this quite easily, there should be here's a, here's models you need. Uh, you need this guy, this guy, this guy. Yeah. Uh, you you're allowed to take up to three hundred points extra. Yeah, the lists in a set. Yeah. And it should have been just like uh, there should have been a certain amount of well, we'll let you do what you want to do. Like Pete, the whole way through is just saying, I need a banner. That's all yeah, I never got a banner. Uh, uh, or you know, Gothamog was never on his wall. You know, everything. Uh, there was a lot of very similar uh, missions too. Like I felt like I was constantly using just oh yeah, I, uh, and everything was eighty six Moran and orcs. Gothamog, two cats and a shield. That was pretty. They always had had uh, eight orcs with nothing. Eight orcs with archers. Eight orcs yeah. with spears. Eight orcs, and that's just like things, choices you wouldn't really take. This isn't what people buy or take. So this is just like nonsense. I think there's always eight Moran and Orcs with no additional war gear, and I don't think they make that model actually. So that was irritating. I mean, they throw in the Moomax as well, don't they? And a few other things, and we go, we went to see the Corsairs at one point. So that was interesting. Yeah. So there's some really good scenarios in there, like the one where we're burning down the buildings it was funny. That was different. That yeah. was very different to everything as well. Well, there was there's ones where it's clearly rigged to follow the story and be completely rigged in one side's favour. Like there's one where you've got a huge army in the dead and Aragorn running at my 12 orcs yeah and there's one where aimer's on his own basically versus about 30 orcs all surrounding him you know there's no way it's very difficult for one one or the other to win um which follows the story but do you need to play a game for that you know it's yeah, it's strange. yeah. Um, the other thing i um, should mention the other thing you buy these books for is to get the uh filthy army lists oh, yeah, like additional the army of the south and yeah and additional and heroes and all sorts of super army well. of the dead and all that stuff so i don't i don't feel like They've done, GW have done this thing where they keep on releasing new books. Book, book, book. And yeah, now, book. if you want to, like, there's four books now with Rohan heroes in it. And that's just like, it, or sorry, there's three books of Rohan heroes. And well, armies, Gondor. Gondor, and then the Rohan. Rohan one. And then you need the uh, rule book as well. This is, I'm going to a tournament with four books. Yeah. I don't, I don't, no one wants this. No. This is just like. They weigh a ton as well. I've been bringing three books around to Sayhouse every week for this campaign. And that 
quickly reduced to two books because I couldn't be bothered carrying them. They do, they do. They do. It just and it just feels it feels irrelevant. Like I somebody has got shares in uh, the printers. I think. I just I just I'm kind of done with books. Yeah. You know the the idea that you need a book for one page of rules. Yeah. Uh, you know I'm I'm preferring the FFG model, which is I've got a card. <laughs> There's yeah, one you card. You get a little box. There's a load of extra stuff in that little box, and it's fifth, twelve pound, fifteen pound. GW across all the systems, I can tell you now, we're just releasing book after book after book. Psychic Awakening, Adeptus Title, and Necromunda. Yeah. Blood Bowl is magazines that then get compiled into Everything books. Everything's just books. Books, 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 books. It used to be plastic, but now they seem to make all the money off books. Maybe, you know. So, <clears throat> yeah, well, we'll call it, conclude there. Um, so, game system is great. Love it. Um, it works as a tournament scene. Brilliantly. This has I been think. quite a sour, I think a sour, Part so two so for to me. us so far. Yeah. Um, we're gonna go and start doing a Legion campaign. We'll, like we're, it'll be a very good eye opener to see how does that compare to it. Now we are veterans of campaigns. We've done Pandemic and Sword and Sorcery. So right. if you want a couple of Warhammer ones. War, so yeah, exactly. They always fizzle out. But, you know, we try. <laughs> uh, we did our Necromunda campaign last year. Yes. So we so we have done absolutely a, a load of campaigns. Yeah. But this campaign, I just felt like. Was drawn out. It was a bit lacking somehow, and it, it just, yeah. it just, there wasn't an excitement. It did not build. It, it stayed flat, and then it, it got repetitive too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that was a, a real shame. But anyway, um, yeah. Anything else you want to say? No, not really. I think the, you know the books are beautiful. And they're full of beautiful model bitches, but the campaign one seemed to need a bit more time. Polishing, spending them, playtesting maybe, that's that's my yeah, anyway. Yeah. Alright, well, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you Cheers. next time. Bye bye.